Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. Now, here's your host, Ed Cohen. Hi, this is Ed Cohen in San Diego, California. It's just about 9 a.m. here on Friday, January uh, 15th. And um, seems like this year has been around much longer than 15 days, doesn't it? Boy. Special day today because of this program. Chase Eskelson and, and Kerry uh, Hannon. Uh, welcome to the show, both of you. And this is all about uh, continuing education, private school education, and we have experts. Chase, please take it from here. Yeah, thanks, Ed, so much for allowing us to be here. Uh, we had so many great shows throughout 2020. What a crazy year. You know, 2020 was the longest decade of my life, it felt like. And <laughs> Then we got into 2021, and it's been the longest uh, year of 15 <laughs> days I think I've ever experienced. So we're just going to continue on with all the crazy. But, man, we are so glad to be back. And I know for those who are listening, we have had many, many shows over the last several months that talk about education and parental support and so many different areas. I think my personal favorite was the social-emotional learning. I thought that was such a great conversation. We had just experts from their respective fields that were able to join us and talk through that. And uh, we're excited today to have Carrie, who uh, personally, I have to say, Carrie is, is probably one of the best teachers that we have. She is the best teacher that we have. I really believe that. And uh, she I is uh, a say teacher that. At <laughs> <laughs> she's a teacher at the Bridge School, which we have talked about frequently on your show. And I'm really excited to dig in and get some Q&A going with her and really just pick her brain on the differences that we've seen with a brick and mortar school, which she's taught in, and an online school that she's taught in, and how they're the same, how they're different, how we can best support students from both perspectives. You know, how do we get parents involved? So we've got a whole host of things that we can talk about with her and really excited to join you today. Kerry, uh, how do you interact personally via Zoom? That's a great question. Um, we, I have several different students. So I have students in California, students in the Texas area, students that are abroad. Um, obviously time zones, I'm on the Eastern Standard Time. So time zones is an important thing. Um, so I think the first important thing when you're communicating um, and trying to set up a meeting is communication. What works best for the family? Um, if you are not serving that family and you are not looking at the family times, like it's easy to look at my personal schedule and my quote unquote nine to five, but that's not today's world. We're, we're not a nine to five society. So it is what is working best to serve my students and their families. Um, so my calendar is open. It's flexible. Um, and then, you know, whether it's Zoom, um, I know that we've used other platforms. Some parents prefer um, some other things, like I've had Skype calls um, when we had students in Korea. That was just easier for them than Zoom. And so, um, you know, just talking to them. I think the biggest thing to make a connection, first and foremost, is to ask a lot about the family and what their needs are, what their wants are. And then with the students, because they are people, what do they like? Um, I think the biggest thing that I've learned from online education, and I've been in online education for 12 years, is you are serving that student. And the students can go anywhere, especially today in 2021. There are so many different virtual platforms available. What are we doing to keep our students and serve them? And so making that connection of, and for me, sports is always a great way to make a connection. So what sports do you like? What hobbies do you like? So I use a lot of that. I'm just personal connection. What about art, photos, uh, music? Uh, not, uh, for, I mean, as a diversion, but also an idea exchange and to get people to open up and um, be less rigid about education. Absolutely. And I think the Bridge School does such a great job with the Strong Mind curriculum. Um, it is a very, there's a lot of visuals there. Um, and it's almost like a lot of our courses almost have a storytelling. 
So it's great when you're talking to the students about like, hey, did you know, did you remember in that class, you know, it's kind of like a gaming activity. What did you like about that lesson? I've had kids say, well, you know what, I really thought it was boring because it's still math. And I'm like, yeah, math is kind of boring, um, but you know, it's something that we have to learn, but we can talk and make that connection. I do have some students who are in the arts um, and I have a daughter who's in the arts. So I think that that connection of being able to talk about, again, it's personal connection, being able to talk about that. I have students who have liked things that I never heard of um, in regards to gaming. I've learned a lot about gaming through the youth. Um, and so, I mean, I, I, again, I think it's making sure that we treat our students like they are people because they are people, we're serving them and making those connections with them. And what about language? Uh, do, you, do, do you get into this? Um, this is the first time you and I have talked, but do, do you have um, the people from uh, another language uh, who, and so English is a second language? I do have a family. Um, they are based in Guatemala. Mom and the younger daughter, um, elementary school, the English would be a second language with them. And their tutor is actually, so they're in Guatemala, their tutor is in France and English is her second uh -huh. language. So it is, you know, there is a, a little barrier, but then there's also that connection. And we talk about different things, um, you know, like I've talked about going to France and what, you know, I should go see if I'm over there and just stuff like that. And, and I think that it's been, again, it's been helpful to be able to say like, you know, I, I don't understand that and be willing to learn. I think that for me has been a great thing is just willing to learn. I do, I'm from South Florida, so I can speak some Spanish. Um, and so that has helped. And, you know, my little second grader has told me I need to work on my Spanish and I told her I will. Um, <laughs> That's funny. So you let know, me ask, I, yes, go ahead. Can I just interject here? How cool is that, that we have a teacher in the United States a student in Guatemala, and then the, um, what, what, what would you call her? The She's the full-time tutor? tutor, yeah. Full-time tutor in France. Uh, and when we were in school, that wasn't a thing. You don't have a tutor in France. You don't have a teacher in another country. Like that's such a cool story that really just tells um, where we are, not only as like, you know, general population, but how cool is that, that education is now catching up with the technology Boy, that's a thing like way cool yeah really and so how do you uh deal with a parent who's uh you know new a uh, first time uh, student to your school who's reluctant um you know and they're afraid or you know how do you get into that We've had a lot of parents like that. I think, you know, especially with COVID, you know, schools were shut down, especially in California, schools are shut down. So these kids are being forced into these online education. I know even in Knoxville, Tennessee, schools were shut down. Um, we were told we were going to have quote unquote online learning and online learning was like a packet that my six-year-old got done with in five minutes. And I'm like, where's the other seven hours because I still have to work. So <laughs> I think really communicating and showing them this is our curriculum. This is actually real online education. And the other thing about it is really talking to parents and students, especially because I work with a lot of high school students as well is about you don't have to sit there for seven whole hours. You can chunk your time, whether it's, you know, certain days you're doing math or you can chunk your hours in, you know what, I'm gonna do math in the morning and English in the afternoon and having that flexibility and parents really being able to see the value of that online education, the value of being able to say, you know what, we can go out to lunch or so-and-so can go and get pitching lessons or take a ballet private during the day when they wouldn't be able to if they were in the brick and mortar. So, There's so many opportunities. I think that's the biggest thing is showing them these opportunities that you are actually given. So when I think back to second grade or, you know, uh, I remember in, this is a long time ago in, in Brookline, Massachusetts, uh, but uh, last century <laughs> so uh we used to stand up and pledge allegiance to the flag you know that kind of thing uh how is that done these days in bridge school um we do not have the pledge although that would be fun um that might be a fun thing for me to do um they do i mean they learn 
I would honestly say the second grader I have is probably learning a little bit more than my first grade, which, you know, if I look at curriculum for the state of Tennessee, it's a little bit more advanced, um, you know, and, and there are, are there struggles? Yes. Do we have to go through certain math facts or certain English, you know, phonics facts? Absolutely. Um, but I think that there is, I know like when it comes to um, just learning or even like with classmates having like there's discussion boards that they can communicate, you know, like, hey, Ed, I, or, I really liked how you, you know, put the parentheses where it was supposed to be. However, Mrs. Hennon said, you know, using that feedback. So they are still able to talk and communicate to each other. It just, again, it's not the traditional brick and mortar where you're standing up saying the pledge, although that might be fun. That might be like, you know, I could do like a fun Friday like that. So one of the, the things to consider about that, yeah. though, is, you know, not all of our students are U.S. based, you know, uh, so that might uh, not be applicable for all students, but uh, definitely an idea, you know. So I, I, I just, you know, thought of that because uh, I was reading some online stuff earlier this morning about uh, what's going on these days in Washington um, and elsewhere about how CEOs of companies are stepping up, uh, not to be like a, a different government thing, but just taking charge, um, uh, leadership about um, honesty, authenticity, delivery of service, making sure th that uh, they're in business and not in politics. Um, and yet at the same time, honoring America uh, in this case um, and uh, making sure the culture is right and clearly understood inside companies. So I was wondering how are civics or government or you know, history, American history uh, in this case, taught these days this is not political this is just a business discussion yeah i'll take the first stab at that and then carrie I'll, I'll turn it over to you to add a little bit more so the first thing to remember for the bridge school specifically is that it is an american school so the education that students get will be from an american viewpoint uh, and it is taught from um not only the american culture which is fantastic you know we're the melting pot of the whole world but it definitely is uh, written from an American viewpoint as well. Um, Carrie, I'll let you get into the specifics of, of what the curriculum looks like and, and how that's taught, but um, that is important to note that, you know, there are other programs out there like an IB program or some of these others that are maybe uh, the British schools, you know, British international schools, uh, but ours is an American. So you're getting an American education. All right, Carrie. Yeah, and I would like to also add to that, not only are they getting an American education, it's NCAA um, accredited, which is a very big thing um, when it comes to even athletes that are abroad. Um, that's a huge thing. Um, so we do have every course that a public school or private school in America would have. Um, there are some assignments that I have loved when I have had the opportunity to have them. Um, one of them was American history and there was an assignment even like on the viewpoint of Thomas Jefferson versus like George Washington or Madison. And it was just really neat. I mean, I was a political science major and to take, um, those were things that I did in college was the viewpoint from Thomas Jefferson versus Martin Luther King Jr. And to be able to have those conversations with the students and to see their work on it. Um, it's not just, okay, Thomas Jefferson, he was this president, he did this. It's more about them using that higher level thinking to really apply what they've learned and how important Thomas Jefferson was in the Declaration of Independence, because it just wasn't one letter written. There, there were several drafts before that. So the students are getting that knowledge and to be able to use it and apply it on a different thinking level compared to what I ever did when I was in American history and, you know, AP. <laughs> so what about kids who need some remedial training? Uh, there, at you know, I, I, I had that occasion need a uh, long, long time ago uh, because I used to stutter. Okay. And so, and that impacted everything, my mental health as well. But um, some of the kids have other needs. So how do you do that online? So there are some that we meet with, like I'll have one-on-one -on -one conferences with. Um, there's others. We have some that are in credit recovery right now. 
to where they're working at their own pace. And again, if they have a question, it, it could be as easy as let me email Mrs. Hennon or it's, hey, Mrs. Hennon, can we meet on Zoom? Um, you know, when are you know when are you available? These are the times that I'm available. Just giving them that remediation. Um, and, and again, what I love about the bridge versus a lot of the schools that I've worked for online is they have a pace chart and it is flexible and they obviously have a start date and an end date. So a first semester would be 18 weeks, but we don't have to rush through an assignment. They can actually take the time to redo assignments. So like for, you know, they have for math workbooks, that would be like your classwork or homework. Well, it's not that you just, you're turning in your homework and you didn't do well, like my daughter in a public school, you didn't do well. So now your grade went from an A to a C because of that one homework assignment. These students get three attempts. And if I, what I have on my end is I even have this thing that we call snapshot it's showing me what standard they're struggling in. So I'm able to even hone in on it. And if I see that, okay, they've taken that three times and they still didn't do it, I can even make a quick video and say, hey, I noticed that you're struggling on this. Um, here's some tips. And then, you know, uh, go ahead and reset it. So, I mean, there's a part that I have to monitor my students and be proactive to see those issues, but there's also on their end that accountability to say, Mrs. Hinnon, I'm struggling on this because maybe they're working in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping, and then I can get back to them. Then what about exercise? Do you have kids stand up or reach for the sky or bend over or, you know, do stuff like that online? Um, I do that, not them, but I do have, I have tennis players, I have soccer players, I have ballet dancers. Um, I'm trying to think, I think we have a gymnast. So, I mean, we've got kids that are, they're super active as it is. Um, and, and they do, they have a PE course and stuff like that. But I mean, just to talk to like my second grader, she's doing tennis over 10 hours a week. So to be seven and be playing tennis over 10 hours a week, that's pretty impressive. So Really? That's wow. Yeah. And now a word from our co-sponsors. You know, our programs wouldn't happen without the wonderful support of our advertisers. Here they are. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners, of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. This episode from the Meeting Room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice, 
at bridgek12.org. Porch Light Rental and Destination Services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. Cube Monk, featuring the world's first smart cube. Track your goods with our advanced GPS system. Welcome to the future of moving and relocation at cubemonk.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at airs.com. Insured Nomads provides protection and peace of mind with health insurance, travel insurance, group, or tailored insurance for the globally mobile. Visit us at insurednomads.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Hi, my name is Christine. I'm a nurse from the Philippines and I got to know IAS through Worldwide Health Staff Solutions and I want to thank IAS, especially to Matthew for helping me get my car um, stress-free, headache-free and so I just want to show you the car that I got. So it's a RAV4 XLE 2020. As an expat moving to the USA, relocating is exciting, but it can also be stressful. Getting a car, truck, or SUV for personal transportation is usually a high priority. That's where International Auto Source comes in. We make getting the vehicle you want for your work assignment or academic program easy, so you're ready to drive when you arrive. Our product specialists have helped over 50,000 expatriates with their personal transportation needs, making us the largest international auto retailer in the world. International Auto Source gives you flexible payment options to buy, lease, or rent a vehicle from the world's leading auto brands, arrange financing on a purchase or lease without a U.S. credit history, social security number, or driving record, get full insurance coverage, and get approved easily through our low-rate factory-backed financing programs. And because we're an authorized distributor of the world's leading automotive brands, our no-haggle prices are competitive, and the buying experience is hassle-free. We'll even guarantee your new vehicle will be ready the day you arrive. With over 20 years of experience in the global community, we are the vehicle experts for expats. We are International Auto Source. Chase, what do you see happening uh, as we get into 21? You know, I think that there has been such a tectonic shift in education over the last year. You know, thinking from our background, Carrie and I have both been in digital education. I've been in more than a decade. Carrie, I don't know how long you've been in, but a long time. This isn't something that's new. Um, and I've said it on your show many times. We were uniquely positioned for all the crazy that 2020 threw at us, uh, what most schools and school districts and charters and privates and everyone out there were not ready for was a huge jump overnight to go purely digital. And so I think that there's been a mind shift change for all the other folks. Hey, <laughs> we probably should have some digital tools in our toolbox and we've got to think this thing through long term. So first and foremost, I see many, many districts, school districts in the United States, they're going to launch and continue full-time online campuses. I think there's going to be many school districts and charters and private schools out there that will majority-wise keep a hybrid type model. 
I just, I don't foresee the average school being an eight to three school in the building anymore. We've realized that, you know, some of these, um, some of these school districts that they can't offer a Mandarin course because there's three kids, four kids that are interested. And so they just wouldn't offer that to those kids. Now they can, because it's a really easy to take those four kids and to put them into a digital course and support the students, A, what they're interested in, B, what will help them reach their long-term goals, and then C, how do we work with these schools and districts and, and the colleges nearby to get them digital courses to start working on college credit? We've seen that a lot in brick and mortar schools, but that's been a change on the other side of the spectrum, right? The digital schools are now realizing we could partner our digital school with the digital courses that are available at a community college or a local college in our city, and we can get our kids digital college credit. So I think that those are really the biggest shifts that we're going to see. And I, I think the best part about all of that, Ed, is those are three fantastic changes that will actually affect students. So many times, some of the things that get rolled out, well, that's good for teachers, or that's good for administrators, or that's good for the school district personnel. But these are three things that are going to affect students. And I just love that that's the focus of where some of these things are moving forward. Carrie, I see you shaking your head. What are your thoughts about those? Well, I know locally, there's been a lot of media about um, the fact that since these school districts have gone to this hybrid model, or you have some students who are full-time in brick and mortar, some that are full-time um, online. And now that they've, uh, like there was one article that talked about it's almost Pandora's box in a way for these brick and mortar schools, because now that they've opened up this option, legally, there's no going back. And I think you were so right, Chase. I think of when I lived in the state of Florida and worked at a um, online school in Florida, one of the largest ones there, the biggest thing was is the Florida legislator mandated that students take online courses. Florida was the first state to do that. Tennessee now is finally, 15 years later, um, finally having that conversation of, oh, maybe our students in high school need to take an online course in order to be successful in college. I mean, and think about it. I mean, I am old, but when we went to college, we still had online courses. Um, and so I think that that is something, like you said, Chase, I think it's, an, it's a great opportunity for our students. And I know the other end of the spectrum that I've heard locally here is, this is a great one-on-one -on -one initiative for even those students with disabilities who might not be able to really physically be in a brick and mortar school because maybe they're wheelchair bound, maybe they're you know um, in, in a bed all day. And so now they can still be part of that a school and feel the connection with kids in school. However, it's gonna be online. So, I mean, I feel like there's so many opportunities for our students. I honestly, like I feel like for online education, 2020 was a blessing, like on a silver platter. So let's talk about different kinds of classes, uh, t topics that could be added into the traditional, uh, such as how to, be camera ready, how to teach poise, uh, presence uh, in front of a camera, uh, and speaking publicly, public speaking, uh, which is basically what this is. Oh, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of people watching potentially. <laughs> and so how do you speak? All right. And then another thing it could be like uh, trade training, you know, because some kids aren't into liberal arts for whatever the reason. Um, they are uh, ballet dancers or they are shop, you know, doing things with their hands. Uh, so that's perfect for online, right? Yeah, one of the things uh, that I think has been fantastic and I'm really excited about the future is how digital education opens opportunities that have never existed before. And I'll give you a perfect for instance. There are many students who are never gonna to go to college. That's, that's just not them. My sister went to one year of college uh, and hated every minute of it. She just, the education was not her thing. Uh, there are a lot of kids out there that are just like my sister and they probably shouldn't go to college. And I know from an educator perspective, that's like, oh, you can't say that because so long we've been pushing every kid go to college, every kid go to college. But 
one of the things that we've missed, like completely missed, is that there are other things out there that can provide a good wage, a good salary, and a fantastic life that don't require a college degree. And one of the things that at a previous school that I worked in, we had a great relationship with some of the local uh, builders unions, with some of the local like HVAC industries and plumbers. And the students that were in our digital program were able to do their schoolwork in the morning and then have apprenticeships with plumbers and, and air con conditioner technicians. And they were graduating from high school with a certification ready to walk into a career where these people are making six figures as a plumber. We don't hear that story on the news ever. Educators are not talking about this, but you can have a fantastic uh, life doing what you love without ever walking into a college. Now, that's not to say that I think no kids should go to college. There are some. Uh, if you're going to be a doctor, I want you to go to all 182 years of college before you <laughs> slice me open. <laughs> but please, please. That's not, <laughs> please. But that's not the right avenue for each student. And so with the digital education, it opens up opportunities. And, you know, there are many different course offerings that we have been able to offer based on the unique instances of what's happening at the local site. We've talked many times, and Carrie, I promise I'm going to turn it over to you in a second. One of the things we've talked about, the reason we love the Bridge School, is because it, it creates partnerships, in-person opportunities. For instance, we have the Island Academy that is a partner of the Bridge School down in Roatan. And one of the things that they have is it's an island. There's a ton of, of biodiversity right there in their own backyard. And they've got these marine biology course offerings. They've got these professional scientists that that's what they do. And they've partnered with the school and those kids are getting hands-on experience every day. That's, that's just not something that would happen in, a, in most traditional schools. So it's really exciting that we can flex the day so those kids can get to wherever they need to be with those biologists to see what is happening at that specific point in time of day. Let's talk about Sesame Street for a second, okay? <laughs> for uh, you know, you know the the old shows uh, in, with the uh, with the Cookie Monster and the Green um, Green today, you know, and they, she's purple or whatever. But it they were brilliant uh, about conveying social issues and talking with people who were different from you. Uh, did, do you guys get into that at all? You want to take it, Chase? Yeah, Carrie. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll start and then I'll, I'll pass it to you if that's all right. <laughs> yes, definitely. So one of the things that we have been so mindful of as we build out with our strategic partner, StrongMind, and through the curriculum is that it does introduce these themes and in these topics in more than just words, black ink on white paper or blank letters on a white screen. Uh, it, it's built in through video through multimedia. They include things like songs. You have to listen to this song as a part of the assignment. And it talks about these different areas that express, hey, we're all in this together. Now let's learn what's really cool from our different backgrounds and then move forward together. So Carrie, I'll let you talk more about it, but that is something that from the very first day of StrongMind has been just an instrumental foundational aspect of building out the digital curriculum. And I was going to mention the videos. I feel like the videos, like the students see um, the diversity there. And I also know, like, even from like the discussion posts, you, I mean, students have commented on other students' posts of like, oh, you know, where are you from? Um, you know, because again, I have a student in Guatemala, but I have a student in Texas and I have a student in Korea and they're all in the same classes and they're like, oh, where are you? You know, so it's very neat. I think, I think what I find interesting is our youth, they're very aware of the global 
community. Um, I think more aware than some adults are. <laughs> um, and, and they and they are they're very intrigued by it. Like they want to, I mean, think about it in terms of social media. They want more followers. I mean, I have an 11 year old, so I'm already learning about, you know, it's, it's important to have more followers. I'm like, no, and you don't want to be a follower either. But that's to them, <laughs> that is an important thing of, you know, getting to know more people and having more access to people. Um, and they love that and they thrive on that. And, and I feel like when you are in, you're not in a building, you are here, you know, digitally where you can, you know, work from home. And then you know that you've got students that are, you know, three time zones away or six time zones away. It's, it, they want to communicate more because they want to know more about that person. So, I mean, I just feel like our youth today, like I said, they're so in tune with that and the global society and, you know, partnerships and communication um, that it, it, I think it makes our job easier. Um, cause I don't know how I would, you know, like, Hey, you know, let's talk about this. Let's talk about it. So, I mean, I just feel like them wanting that and them being like sponges and wanting that connection and communication, it just makes it easier. Plus again, strong minds curriculum, um, leaps and bounds beyond other, you know, places that I, I mean, they're just digital, the, the videos, the, um, even the, even the text. I mean, if you really think about it, even the text and, and the way that they plot the curriculum, like storytelling and stuff like that. I mean, that's just, it keeps the students engaged and they want more. They don't, it's not something that they're just going to shut off. So Chase, uh, we have about five minutes or so left uh, to optimize our time and everybody's time today. Um, upcoming shows. This, next week is about coding. Does that mean uh, writing programs? What does that mean? Yeah, we're really excited. We've got some, some interesting things coming. We, as Verano, we're an education nonprofit. We have partnered with many different people and entities. So the Bridge School, Carrie, is just one of those. Another is a program called iCode. And it's actually based here in, in the DFW, Texas area. And it, it, it's an after-school program that focuses on um, creation and not consumption of media. Uh, how do we code in different formats? So we have really fun things. We have things, for instance, uh, a drone program. We have a YouTube program. We have a website building program. We've got all these different things and, and students can work their way through iCode. And the way that it's built, Ed, is like, uh, uh, it's like karate for computer coders. So instead of having a belt around your waist, they have a lanyard that goes around their neck and it has a USB on it. And they work from a white belt, <laughs> white, yellow, orange, red, all the way up through master black belt. And if I they like go that. through the entire program, they'll learn seven different coding languages. I mean, it's a really, really robust program. And I am working right now to get the founder and or the president of iCode Corporate to join us and to talk about that. So it's going to be a really great show. They just launched their, their uh, most recent uh, franchise of this in Mauritius. So, I mean, if somebody's got to go visit, I'm happy to do that for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to get your COVID vaccine first. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> okay, let's talk about, um, as there's so much we could talk about, God, um, music and art, you know, that kind of thing. But, but also... Um, how to learn to do something different uh, because you, so, so you have young kids and you have teenagers in school, right? So they're learning different things. And how do you teach interpersonal relations? Well, I, I, I will say one of the, the best parts about working in a digital education environment is no two days ever look the same. Uh, no two weeks ever look the same. For instance, uh, Carrie works at the bridge school and we, we opened up our iCode program. So I'm kind of pulling all these things back together. We opened up our I, iCode program for students online over the summer. You know, 2020, a lot of people aren't going to go to a building and do iCode. Uh, and Carrie was generous enough to support. <laughs> we had so many students sign up we didn't have enough iCode instructors. So Carrie is not an iCode instructor, but she was able to come and join us and help do some of the training for the younger kiddos 
Um, and and thankfully, my what? eleven-year-old knew what Roblox were because I did not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. And so, to get to your question, I think it's really interesting that we are forced. I mean, really, we are in so many ways. We're forced into uncomfortable situations as educators that we have to get a little grit, uh, think on our feet, and figure out how do I thrive in the environment in which I am dropped. And perhaps that's one of the, the greatest attributes of teachers is that they have the ability to just take life as it comes, especially in a digital format. But then it becomes easier for them to turn around and explain those things back to students because it's, it's not a foreign concept. It's literally who teachers are. <laughs> this is what they do every single day. Yeah, uh, and so then yeah. to turn around and explain that, it's a personal like, illustration versus just, uh, you know, again, text on a book or something. So it's in your DNA, Carrie, right? So, Some uh, days. So Some days, hopefully. <laughs> the young kids in particular um, are more agile than I am with thumbs, but um, TikTok, uh, are, do, do you teach how to be a Steven Spielberg film producer on TikTok? <laughs> I personally think we should have a course on social media. I think that would be like kids would be so drawn to that. Um, we don't, I mean, we don't have a course on that, but I think again, like now that I'm in as a parent in those middle school years where I'm like, oh, wow, I got to download all these apps to keep up with this stuff and make sure my kids all private. And all. I mean, I, you know, I, I honestly talking to parents um, and again, just even talking to my families in Guatemala or in other areas, um, th those are things that as a teacher, when we're talking about not just their students' progress, we're talking about as parents, like, how, how are you handling that? So that's not just a, you know, Knoxville, Tennessee or U.S. issue. That is a global social. And again, I think it goes back to students understanding that there is a global community and wanting more connection. They feel like the connection is online. And sometimes they don't realize like that one-on-one -on -one conversation. So I'm very like one of the things about me when I'm talking to a parent I want that student there so I can have that one-on-one -on -one communication with the student so they can see Mrs. Hennon is not a robot behind a computer screen like some virtual platforms and companies are. This is Mrs. Hennon. And there's been times, especially with my second grader, because she's young, I've brought my six-year-old in when we've had a snow day here. And I'm like, hey, this is my daughter, Juliana, you know, and just letting them communicate a little bit and then them talking about fancy Nancy or... and. And I think the making those connections, what do you like reading? What kind of music? Oh, have you been on TikTok? Oh yeah, I saw that one TikTok video. That was horrible. Can you believe that those kids put that, to, you know, just all those types of things. Um, I, I think that that's what makes the communication easier and it engages our families. It engages our students. Thank you for being on Global TV Talk Show. This has been an education. <laughs> <laughs> Please come back again, Carrie. Thank you. All right, thank you, Chase. Have a good one. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day, and stay safe.